This is the eLearn podcast, episode number 74. When I go into a group that's 500 bankers or something and, you know, finance investor, whatever, very staid accounting kind of, and I go into Deloitte, it's a tough crowd, man. Mm -hmm. It's a tough crowd because, you know, I'm coming in gangbusters and they're like, oh my God. But, but like I said, passion, energy, enthusiasm, and the right material. It's contagious. Welcome to the eLearn podcast. My name is Laddick and I'm your host from eLearn magazine. It's a real treat for me to have Rhonda Beeman on the show today. Among many other things, she is the first recipient of the National Education Association's Art of Teaching Award. A true teacher's teacher, Rhonda is a best-selling author several times over. She's a renowned university professor, a serial educational entrepreneur, a coach, a fitness trainer, and a 2020 Stanford Distinguished Career Fellow. I am sure you're going to enjoy this conversation as much as I did, where Rhonda and I talk about why you don't have to be a coach, let alone a fitness trainer, to engage your learners during a session. But it would probably help you the way that it, it helped Rhonda if you were. We also talk about why physical activity, games, and even music are resources you should seriously consider applying in your lessons, and why learner engagement could be a matter of subverting Ed's expectations. We also talk about the challenges of teaching people at different ages, especially those that are considerably over and under your age, and Rhonda's thoughts on how to reach the jaded, be it teenagers or middle management folk nearing their retirement. And then finally, we talk about the power of humanity in education, regardless of modality, age, topic, or personality, and why being open on your end can encourage empathy and kindness on theirs. But before we get started, a quick word from our sponsors. The eLearning Podcast is sponsored by the eLearn Success Series, a uniquely valuable set of events that bring together sector experts and thought leaders to offer solutions to the most critical challenges and issues at the intersection of education and technology. Get your free ticket to all four sessions at eLearnSuccessSeries.com. And Open LMS a company that provides world-class LMS solutions that empower organizations to meet education and workplace learning needs. Learn more by visiting openlms.net. Hello, Rhonda. Welcome to the eLearning Podcast. How are you today? I'm delighted to be here with you and, uh, you know, trying to celebrate the end of summer, you know, trying to keep it all cool here. <laughs> <laughs> celebrate the end of summer. I don't think anybody's, yeah. nobody's ever, nobody has put it that way. Everybody says, you know, it's back to school. Everybody says, you know, this is, uh, this is the time of year, you know, and people get stressed out. So you're celebrating though. I love that day. Yeah. I mean, every, you, you got to celebrate every season of your life, you know? I mean, um, I just, I, I just believe that. And, and I think we let too many days go by where we don't really notice. And so it's been a great summer. We, I'm in California. We didn't, our house didn't burn down. Life is good. <laughs> You know, I'm from Colorado and our, our, our mountain, you know, the, our, the place we go in the mountains didn't burn down last year. And so I will we're second you. I will second you on that. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. it. You know, I love that we're starting this with mindfulness. That's fantastic. Yeah. You know, like yeah. let's be intentional right on. Exactly. Um, Rhonda, I've teed you up in the introduction to the podcast, but give us the, the 30 seconds on who you are, where you come from, what you do, et cetera. Great. Uh, Started out in television as a broadcasting news person and morphed it. I remember the station um, producer saying to me, um, Roundup, no, one, no one's going to really believe bad news with you delivering it. So <laughs> they put me on, <laughs> they put me on um, human interest stories and uh, told me that, um, you know, I'd be like the next Katie Couric or something. And so they'd send me to zoos to interview <laughs> giraffe, those kind of stories. So I morphed from that into marketing and public relations. And um, then I actually went back to grad school for my MBA since I had started my own PR firm. And I stood in a classroom. Part of my gig was at a was as a TA and um, stood in the classroom, taught my first copywriting class. And I thought, I freaking love this. 
and uh, <laughs> it like put together everything that I felt like I could do, you know, halfway decently, which is, you know, be in front of people, be creative, inspire people, um, be, you know, have an interchange, have an audience that can't leave. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so that's how I, so I became a professor, mm-hmm. uh, got my doctorate in leadership and policy studies at ASU and uh, have taught from everywhere from um, Penn State, Harvard, uh, did a little thing at Wharton, um, MIT uh, as guest lecturing uh, for my company, and then also uh, tenured gigs at Arizona and um, Texas and Washington. So yeah, I've been kind of all over. Cool. I want want to peel the onion there on the career just a bit, simply because, you know, there's a large portion of our audience are people who look and taste and feel just like you. Mm -hmm. But I want to hear, I have a few questions there that I didn't expect to have, but now that you've broken it all down. um, But but before I do that, before I do that, I am using the podcast as a time capsule for COVID and uh, it's August, you know, middle of August right now. Tell me what does California or where you sit in California? What's, what's the COVID situation like? What's, you know, what's the universe like for you? Well, uh, I'm in a small town in California in central, on the Central Coast, San Luis Obispo. And uh, just like I think everywhere, we were doing great for a little while. And now the numbers for Delta are up, up, up. And um, we don't have a mask mandate yet. But uh, a lot of the good citizens of our community are, are you know, self-masking mm-hmm. when they're indoors and things like that. And, um, you know, I, I think it's just like everywhere we have no clear cut direction or clear cut leadership or clear cut um, answers. So everybody's just uh, kind of flying by the seat of their pants. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. All right, cool. Yeah. So going back to you and your career, you mentioned that you've done guest lecturing as a part of your consulting company, but you were a tenured professor as well. Like, like for those of us listening uh, you know, who there's just so many people who are now in the teaching world, right? Either putting a masterclass online, especially in the e-learning world, or, you know, they're a part of a university system or they're a K through 12 teacher, or they're finding themselves homeschooling over the last year. Like, like tell us about how you've balanced that. What, what was your choice to um, have a consulting company and what's that used for? Like, where, where does that take you rather than sort of the traditional I'm behind the lectern professor situation? Right, right. Great question. I never liked being behind a lectern. Um, So for any of your uh, uh, um, listeners who might remember Phil Donahue, how we go up and down all over. I cannot (laughs) believe that you just pulled out Phil. Yes. Nice. I'm old enough (laughs) to know Phil. Yeah. Okay. That's what, that's what I do. That's what I did. I was like, why would I be standing up there instead of out with the peeps, you know? So, um, but uh, for this past year, uh, when I realized I was going to have to be on Zoom, um, I had 150 19 year olds on Zoom. And I just thought that I, I can't do it for my own self. This is what I don't understand about a lot of teaching. You know, it has to be interesting and interactive and amazing to you, the teacher, uh, so that you can pass that on. Passion is contagious. So why you would just keep doing the same thing over and over and over. um, I I don't, I've never understood that. And so when Zoom hit us, um, we, I took a page out of my broadcasting um, background and we started doing remotes and we had guests from all over the world come in and then we did props and we did a laugh track. <laughs> we did, you know, applause track. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You know, those, uh, everything pulled it all out. I had four of my best students thrilled to help do something creative like that. And those 150 kids, um, you know, by, by and large, I never, please, you know, <laughs> put your camera on, they started to really dig it. And it was the thing that they could enjoy. They looked forward to the most because everybody else, you know, was doing the standard operating procedure. I'm not criticizing them. I'm just saying for your own self, as a prof, as a teacher, you know, why you wouldn't try to make it fun for you and then 
guess what? It's also fun. I, I'm a big, and I know I take a lot of heat for this for my colleagues and, and other people, but I really believe in edutainment. I really believe mm. that you can't learn if you're not psyched and engaged. And it doesn't mean you have to be, you know, a wild and crazy curly haired person, but your own passion, what, what form of passion do you have for geology mm-hmm. and how do you communicate that? Um, too many times I believe that people walk into any kind of learning situation as the instructor and think, look, I love this. So you're going to love this. And mm-hmm. that's not the truth. That is not the truth at all. Think of chemistry 101. <laughs> Nobody loved it except, you know, the people <laughs> that were going to be chemists. I, most of the people I know took it just to go to play with the Bunsen burners. That's all I know. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. So I, I really believe in, in stretching the model and um, bringing as much creativity. Now, look, I'm really lucky. I teach at the university level. I don't go in, you know, uh, and teach seven classes five days a week at a K through 12, those people are the heroes. And, you know, and there are plenty of people who turn their classrooms into, you know, um, entrepreneurial labs for fifth graders. And, you know, there's plenty of that kind of stuff going on. I'm certainly not the only one. Um, But yeah, I think that uh, it's such a great job. I, I write books. And one of the books that I've been playing with the idea is it's the last great job on earth to be an instructor of any type when you have when you can play a part in someone's life like that that might you might change their life you might enhance their every kid I don't care how old they are from five to 85 comes into a classroom and hopes secretly they may not even consciously understand it but hopes this could be something that will change their lives this could be be something that I'm going to learn and it's going to, you know, expand me as a human. Everyone comes into a classroom like that. And within 10 minutes, most of us go, oh, maybe not. Well, <laughs> maybe they, I, I would maybe I, it'll be my next class. Let me ask you this. Is. So like, you, I, 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 I think that, you, you know, it, we, when you break down that premise that everyone walks, because I feel it too. Like if I'm going to sign up for any kind of educational thing, right. Whether it's a, quick micro learning thing about marketing or, or, you know, a deeper class, like, I've, you know, I've got master's degrees too. Like, you know, like those things, you, you, you walk in with the anticipation of, okay, what do you do? And what do we do about the adult learner universe where you've got like compliance training and you've got, you know, here's your force leadership training, or here's your, what, you know, like is, are, are, what do we do about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that is that on the instructor? Is that on the L and D team? Is that on the what? Or or do we need to also just like horsewhip corporate, you know, everywhere to say, look, you need to do this differently. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, again, that's a great question and perspective. And if I could solve that, um, I would have flown in my private jet to come <laughs> <laughs> see you and do this all live. But uh, I have opinions. But um, you know, I. The thing is, like when I go into a group that's 500 bankers or something and, you know, finance investor, whatever, very staid accounting kind of, and I go into Deloitte, it's a tough crowd, man. Mm-hmm. It's a tough crowd because, you know, I'm coming in gangbusters and they're like, oh my God. But, but like I said, passion, energy, enthusiasm, and the right material it's contagious and you can wear them down. And, you know, the thing that you have to be very careful about with it, what, what is the old term they used to use? Andragogy, right? There's pedagogy and andragogy. Sure. And the thing you have to be aware of in andragogy is, you know, most of the people I go into to speak at companies or whatever are, you know, early forties, mid fifties, they're tired, <laughs> they're mm. tired, jaded, Mm. Um, this is not what I thought I'd be in my lifetime. Um, but there's still that, that little spark. Uh, I, in fact, I just did a LinkedIn post about this, that there's this little spark of who you were and, and, and that energy and that belief and, you know, the hope of what you could do with your life. It's still in there, those little seeds of our true selves. And if you can tap into those somehow, um, does it take design? Does it take time? Does it take more time than just giving them the material and getting the heck out of there? Sure, it does. 
But again, it's for you too, because it's more fun for you to, you know, work with people that, that can, will you get everybody? No, you know, no. What's but, your, what's your, uh, I, okay. I, I, let's see if I, I, you, maybe you won't reveal, you know, Rhonda's tricks of the trade. Cause this is what, you know, these are your things, but I, 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 I'll even, and I'll go first. I'll, I'll lead the witness. So I okay. teach, a, I teach a class at American university. My technique for engaging these immediately engaging these adult you know, young adult learners, right? Yeah. Well, I can now say young adult because I used to go into a classroom and be like, hey, we're peers. But now I'm like, whoa, no, you're 20 years younger than me. Here's, here's the thing. They never tell you this about teaching, <laughs> that they stay the same and you just keep going. <laughs> Which I love about it, right? But um, my, and, you know, I'm not revealing anything, but, and this is nothing new, but I do the, I'm going to prove to you that I can know everybody's name in the first hour, right? I've got a little, it's, there's no, it's not, you know, it's not a dog and pony trigger and like that, but you know, my class is, you know, 20 people or so, maybe sometimes it's a little 25, but we can go through in about 35, 40 minutes where, you know, as long as you really just sort of focus and pay attention, it's possible to learn everyone's name that quickly. I've got them. You know what I mean? Absolutely. From that point forward, I've got them because it becomes a personal experience. Absolutely. What's, what's your, what, what are like one or two of the ways that you do that to like, you walk into a Deloitte, you walk into a whatever okay, Rhonda is teacher of the year three times or whatever, you know, how, what's, how do you get that going? Well, if, if you're in a, you know, collegiate, so I really love that story because, um, and, and I'm not trying to one up you. I'm really not, but well, I, I hope I, you do. I hope I, I expect <laughs> you to like a hundred up me, <laughs> <laughs> but like I, I teach classes of like three or 400 and I tell mm -hmm. them, I will know your name by the next class. And if I don't, I'm buying the whole class pizza. And they're all looking, they're looking around going, oh man, you know, and what I do is I videotape them on the way out. I have one of my TAs help me. And that's the other thing. If you're a teacher who's on fire, I mean, there's so many kids that want to help you. They, they want to be near it. They want to be part of it. You know, so I always have pretty soon. I'm going to have one TA for every student in my class <laughs> <laughs> because I never turn volunteers away. I'm like, sure, you can help me. So somebody's videotaping and the kids go by and just say their first name. And, you know, again, it's not being a genius. It's work. And I sit and watch that tape to the point where people in my house are going, her name's Jody. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, um, but so, yeah. And then my students will tell me I have a, I have a class with 15 people in it. And he doesn't know our name. Yeah. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think the names are really, really important. Um, mm -hmm. I also come in with, I use music. Um, music is a great leveler, you know, um, even at a, a, a Deloitte or I will play something like, um, I just did a thing at, a, at First National Bank and my song was Better Days by the Goo Goo Dolls, you know? Mm. And, and it was like, I hope we find better days. And that was playing the whole time that people were coming in, it was on repeat. And then my whole talk was about, you don't find these better days, you make them and how you do that, blah, 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 blah. But the music starts to set the tone, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, this is cool. Tom Petty's learning to fly. You could use that for any speech you're ever going to give, <laughs> any class you're ever going to teach, because that's all that we're all doing, right? We're just do you pick, learning to fly. So just on that, on that one, one topic there, would you pick it? Uh, I use music as a level earlier as well. I just, I'm, you know, yeah, I'm doing, the yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm doing what the great Rhonda does. Um, but, uh, <laughs> would, would you, would you pick it? Cause I I'll, I'll go right to like EDM electronic dance music or like, like my kids love dubstep. And so I know a couple of great dubstep stuff that, you know, like, yeah, it, I, I think I also choose it to kind of not only set the tone, but also create a little dissonance, right? Yeah. Because you, so often you walk in, especially into like a, if you walk into a, you know, a typical training thing for in corporate or even in, in a college university setting and there's something like, like, wait a second, what, this sounds like a dance. What's going on yeah, here? Yeah. You've yeah. all, you've already scrambled a little bit. Like, how do you choose? Like, are you pre-choosing that? Like if you, I'm assuming that if you were to give a speech in Miami or in Texas, you might do something different than if you did it in Detroit or in yeah, Washington yeah. state. Right. What, what, what do you think? Ex exactly. I, I, mine is totally totally theme based so um example um great big world has a song called this is the new year so january school starts the leadership class 
um, I had at that point 15 TAs and I, I asked them to come dressed like they were part of the class, sit in the class. Underneath, we had t-shirts printed that said, <laughs> that said, you know, the name of the class, which is Leadership Summit. And um, so I start lecturing and, you know, typical behind the lectern, I'm, I'm very important. I'm the professor kind of <laughs> lecture. And this kid, one of my guys, stands up and goes, how long are you going to give us this bullshit? <laughs> nice. And I look over at him like, what? He goes, I mean, you're telling us all these stupid theories about leadership. I mean, have you ever been out there, tried to do this? Or you just tell, and everyone in the class is like, oh. Oh, tension. Oh my God. Oh my God. And then the music starts and one by one, the students get up and they, they do one of the choruses and they're tearing off their shirts and they're coming up front. Then we have volleyballs that are the world and we're hitting the big, great big world around. This is the new year. The kids thought they were in the middle of glee. I mean, <laughs> it's like, and I mean, you could have heard a pin drop. It's not like right away they join in. They're just stunned mm -hmm. and then they sit down and go this is going to be different this is going to be different and it is going to be different because you know you're going to you're going to play with us and you're going to learn with us and so yeah all my music is themed as to what you know I'm trying to do that particular talk or class or whatever but that and again I do it for me it helps me you know, I get in there and I hear the music and I start feeling like, mm, you know. All right. Yeah. So, so, so this is where I want to go with that. This question is, you know, there's several hundred people listening right now who are going to think, oh man, that sounds like a shit ton of work. You know what I mean? It, this is, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to keep, keep it together. And, you know, I've got three young kids and I've got this and, and I, 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 or that's not my personality. I'm an introvert, you know, and I just want to, and, or, you know, there, there's, there's any number of excuses. Endless. What, Endless. what is, and so what, you know, first of all, when did you truly decide this is who you're going to be? Like when you first, you know, you got out of your PhD and you, I guess probably while you were doing your PhD, you were probably a TA at that point as well. You were probably in front of a class or is this something that's evolved over time or how do we as instructors I mean, especially in higher ed, which is going through the biggest crisis ever over the last, you know, 18 months. Yeah. Yeah. How do we decide? Like, how do you help others in your, in our profession decide to step up and it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, the 110 volume that you just described, but no, just do no. something different. Like what's, what's that moment where you, do they need to have that aha moment or I'm just going to shut up. You tell me. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know. You know, I can't speak for everybody, but I, but for myself, um, I, again, I would ask why you're bothering doing this job and, and what can you bring to it that no one else could bring? You don't have to be on volume 110. Um, I happen to kind of live that way, but, you know, first of all, the excuse when I first started, you know, I, I was teaching five courses. I was a single mom. I was working on my doctorate. You know, I had two little boys. And I still did this. This, mm -hmm. this is part of the calling. You know, it's, it's a calling. It, and um, so I, I just never thought about doing it any other way because let me, let me give you the best example I can think of. Most people, not all, but most people parent the way they were parented. Mm. Right? So they, you know, they've found statistically that, that children of alcoholics become alcoholics. Um, children of abuse become abusers more often than not. And it makes no sense. It's like, wow, you would think quite the opposite. There's something in the human, um, you know, operating system that's a little wonky. You know, our software is a little wonky, uh, especially for the new current world. I mean, our software is so far behind what's coming at us mm -hmm. that I understand giving up. I understand playing it safe. I understand low level. I get it. I get it. But think about when you sat in classes with teachers who weren't trying, when you sat in classes that you thought, how oh, mighty, this is, this is, this should be interesting. You mm -hmm. know, well, uh, this person's not even, why would you replicate that? Right. 
So like I, um, you know, social science class at ASU, this guy put a tarantula on his head, very quiet, very quiet, man. And he, we come into the classroom for the first day and these are all adults. And he's mm-hmm. got a tarantula on his head. <laughs> We're all like, what in the hell? Yeah. You know, and everybody's looking at each other. And the whole point was about, you know, it was about social science and people are scared of it. And you shouldn't, you know, it's not going to bite you. It was adorable. Uh-huh. And here's the thing. It wasn't high volume. It wasn't high energy. But it's like you knew he was trying and you mm. were already on his side. Yeah. You were already on his side because he was trying. Well, that's and that's you know? the one thing I wonder is or not wonder. But I, I think as well that I, you know, I either offer to my colleagues or others that I've, you know, come in contact with around the space. We're just like, just, you know, just take one left turn once. You know, rather than, you know, rather than always going right or rather than just kind of walking that same path, like you said, just try that that once. Right. It could be as simple as changing what you wear. It could be as simple as, like you said, put some music on before class. It could be as simple as, you know, tell them your story about why you're passionate about the topic before you even start the class. Like, just say, look, I I think this is the coolest stuff ever. And, you know, it's even just those little moments. And then once you, once you, once you feel that energy, you can just, you know, you just kind of uh, snowball off of it and and it goes, goes kind of crazy. Yeah. And, and most people are very, very kind, you know, and particularly students are very kind. You've got the worst teacher. I've seen this a million times and, you know, even so they'll give you a three, they won't go, God, this guy was a one, you know, if you're doing evals. Kids are really generous because mm-hmm. they know it's a tough thing to do and they're usually very kind, you know, but so it doesn't take a lot. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, it takes some work and yeah, it takes rising above the norm, you know, because maybe none of your colleagues are doing that, um, you know, but I, I, one of the really great moments that, that I like a lot is playing Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror. And I get I, I walk around the classroom with a mirror and let people look in the mirror at the thing. And, and we're talking about when you rise above in any way, shape, or form, when you do a little more, it doesn't take a lot more. The difference between a C student and an A student is about an hour and a half. You know, mm. it doesn't take a lot. But when you do that, there are going to be people, you're shining a mirror on them and they have to think well why am I not doing that so the only takes a hell of a person to look in the mirror and go I don't like my job I don't like my students I don't like and it's my fault not anybody else's that takes quite a lot of courage that most people won't muster they'll blame it you know oh that's Mm -hmm. Steven he just you know he he thinks he's great because he plays me that's not (laughs) about you that's not it's not about you at all right you're shining Mm -hmm. a mirror and making them look in it and go, well, why did I choose this path? Mm. And how come my students don't react the way his students do? And, you know, and, and it's a, it, you have to have a strong constitution to, to you know, what, what somebody told me the other day, um, profits are never appreciated in their own time. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to let that, that one sit there. <laughs> <laughs> But when so you def- try to break the mold, yeah. So take um, you've had the luxury. Not let's not say that you've had the privilege, um, for many good reasons of being able to teach at other universities. Um, have you also done international stuff? I or no? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, how important is it for you to get out of your box, go to other environments? you know, experience other parts of the world, other, even just other campuses to have that crack the net. I know, and again, I, I'm, I'm totally leading the witness here because I, my family's lived overseas for 16 years, right? And we've just found so much of the magic in our life is because we've put ourselves in these places of uncomfortability, uh, for, you know, yep. on, for almost every day that yeah. you, you kind of look back on who you are and you're like, wow, how can I do that difference? So let's reflect that in teaching. Like, has that, is that something you'd recommend to your colleagues about take that sabbatical, go somewhere else or find another teaching gig or just try to put yourself out online or, or what? 
I think every teacher should have to uh, go do an internship at least every other year in what they're professing or teaching, you know? Mm. Um, so if you're teaching advertising, you need to go to an advertising agency and work there as an intern, see what that's like and see what, you know, I think that that kind of thing is so important. And, you know, uh, even I remember trying to learn to snowboard not too long ago and I hated it. Um, <laughs> you know, I'd been, I've been skiing, but I'd never been snowboarding and I was falling. You're falling all the time and it's humiliating and it's uncomfortable and I remember thinking, this is what learning is. Mm. It's humiliating and uncomfortable and, until you catch up. And that's what it's like to sit in a classroom. And you need to remember that. And, you know, just because you know the formula, they don't. And, you know, all that kind of good stuff. So if, if you put yourself in these uncomfortable positions where you're the other, you know, I think being the other is really critical to your own growth. Um, and. You know, when I went over to England, um, I wrote a book called You're Only Young Twice. And it's all about, you know, how these these do overs to keep you young inside and all this kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm working it. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it. And the first question is, well, that's all well and good for an optimistic American. But what would you say to a sour Brit? <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Oh, oh, he goes, we're not brought up that way. We don't think that way, you know. Wow. Wow. You know, so yeah, it taught me a lot. Just the, just the question. Mm -hmm. So I think it's so, I think it's critical to your own personal growth. And I, that brings me back to this thing. I keep beating over the head. You have to want personal growth. You mm -hmm. have to want to be better. You have to want to um, really earn that the privilege of standing in front of a room full of people in whatever capacity and sharing with them what, you know, that's a privilege and an honor. And you should be humbled every time you walk into that room and you should be at your best every time you walk in that room and bring your best knowledge. I mean, look, they're already smarter than you. They already have the access of the entire, entire world right here. Mm -hmm. So if you're, you think you're going to teach them something they haven't heard, seen or know, or could look up, you're wrong. Right. So now how do you engage them and how do you direct their learning and their knowledge? Um, in the way that you as a professional um, think it should go. That's the challenge. What is the old, you know, you're not, you're not the uh, sage on the stage anymore. You're the guide on the side. Yeah. And it, that's a tough transition for people. Uh, my son teaches at UVA university of Virginia. And when he got there, he teaches at the business school and they told him flat out when they watched him teach. Now he's a 5.0 teacher. He gets uh, incredible, incredible mm -hmm. um, evaluations. But the first time that somebody came in to watch him, they said, that's not how we do it here. We are Socratic. You have to ask questions. You hardly say anything. You just keep asking questions. Mm. And they're one of the top 10 business schools in the country because they're asking questions. They're sure. not just filling the tank, right? right. And he said it was such a hard transition to make because he's so used to, and, but so critical. So there's stuff you can learn all the time. That'll make you better. Wow. Super interesting. Let's, let's evolve that to, or transition that to the last 18 months where you said, look, here's what we're doing now here. Here are the tools we're given. Here's the reality that we are dealing with. Right. And many people are still dealing with it. I'm again, to take the American university, you know, system or even my kids, right? It's like, we're, we, we, my wife and I are absolutely ecstatic because the kids are actually going back to school right now. Right. But we're also playing that game. Like we know that the school could shut down for a week or two at any moment. Sure. Right. And so right now we're just like, Oh my God, the kids are back in school, but also, so the universities they're, they're opening they're this and that, but we have to have the reality that digital delivery I, I almost hate using the term hybrid anymore simply because yeah. this is a part of what we do now, right? It's just, it's, as you just explained, Correct. Everything, yes. everything is available to you in the palm of your hand all the time. Mm -hmm. Walk me through, you know, when you knew that you first had to be online only, like what was your, what was your process to say, okay, how am I going to make this interesting? But then also like, I want to know some more nuts and bolts. Like you had those TAs, like you said, you had a laugh track and isn't that like, 
how do you how do you orchestrate that? How do you coordinate that? Well, the, when when it first hit, and I realized what we were going to have to do, um, I thought about well, how do I learn online? What am I currently doing? You know, and I took a look at Masterclass and how they set those up. I took a look at podcasts and how, you know, all the stuff that I was using to learn uh, without being in the room. And um, so the first thing that, that I did was we produced a pod class. So mm. um, I did the whole thing. It was called Dr. B and me, you know, business 306 pod class. <laughs> and um, we just gave it a try. And luckily, you know, I, I had a, um, administration that allowed me to give that a shot. Uh, would I do it again? No, no, mm -hmm. because there was no interchange. There was no, you know, mm -hmm. I had a Tuesday Zoom bloom. And so you could come on to that and ask questions and talk about whatever the pod class was about, but I wouldn't do it again. Um, but it was worth trying, um, you know, and so I, I take a look at how I think you could maximize the, um, you know, delivery Thing that you're given whatever delivery system you're given and I just sit and think about it for a while and if I was in the class I never think about if I'm teaching the class I'm, I always think about and that and then that's from um, any sort of media training to tells you what's the most important the audience mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. not you not the star not the prof not the what the audience so if I was in the audience or I was sitting, you know, listening, well, how would I want it to be? You know, what would engage me and what would be good for me? So that I kind of turned it around um, because I think you're right. Steve. I think that, the, you know, that just like masks on an airplane, <laughs> um, digital delivery is here to stay. And, uh, you know, whether it's you, you get to pick or it's here to stay because once you break open, like you said, the box, once you, once all the administrators found out, this works and we don't have to have office space and mm -hmm. insurance and all that cr crazy, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, again, you, you think of the audience and then you think, how do I want to spend my life? How do I want to spend my days? How do I want to spend, you know, how much of me do I want to put into this? And people are so much more creative than they give themselves credit for. And everybody has a particular skill, talent, knowledge base, something they can do that no one else can do use that, mm. you know, figure out how to use that. Um, and I, I just think most people think, um, I don't know what it is. I really don't. I don't know if they think they're not worth it or they, they're afraid that they might be judged if they do something, you know, different than their colleagues or uh, I'm not quite sure what it is, but, um, you know, uh, it's your life. Mm. If, if I had Eminem right now, I'd play it for you because you get one <laughs> shot. What opportunity. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, <laughs> if only I knew the lyrics, if only I knew the lyrics, I would totally do it for you. What? Um, take me to the, uh, the other side of where a class goes, which is learner outcomes assessment, um, you know, having students not only walk out of the class so that you can go to administration and say, look, you know, we delivered what we said we would, but they walk out thinking not only was that fun and great, but holy crap, I, I, you know, I'm a, I've leveled up. Yeah. How do you approach that? Um, well, I'm really lucky that I don't, you know, here's the difference. People will say what I do is soft skills. Mm -hmm. And I would argue that except that it's the most important skill of the future, but that's okay. Cool. Well, mm -hmm. that's exactly right. It's exactly, so I call it the harder skills. There's hard skills, but this is harder because there's no formula. There's mm -hmm. no right answer. There's no right. So um, how do you prove to, to administration and the students themselves? Well, my best way with students, of course, um, you, you know, you can do those evals and all that kind of stuff, but really it's the jobs they're getting. It's the, job interviews they're going through and showing leadership portfolios. It's the, you know, um, the concrete stuff that they've got and the way they feel when they leave a room. It's like, I, you know, one of my deans came to me and said, everyone at graduation is coming through going, your class changed their life. Mm. And I'm, I'm like, while that's humbling and all that, it shouldn't be 
my uh, what I do, mm-hmm. yeah, it, what I do should not be extraordinary. Mm-hmm. W- you know, I, I it, it isn't. It's just that they've never had. I mean, if you ask most people how many wow teachers they've had in a lifetime, I taught pre-service uh, teacher coming in wanting to be teachers, 400 of them in a room. How many of you have had 10 or more wow teachers? Nobody's hand goes up. Mm-hmm. Hands don't start going up until about five or three out of, you had at least 30 teachers by now. So you're saying 1% of them made you go, wow. Mm-hmm. And so what makes you think you're going to be any different? And this must be a very hard gig <laughs> because if people aren't, you know, wowing you with it, then what's up, what's wrong. Um, mm-hmm. So the assessment thing, you know, I do all kinds of um, portfolio learning. We did back when YouTube was brand new, um, we did, and we thought we were such trailblazers. Uh, this kid that was helping me and I were doing evaluations on YouTube, mm. you know, making, making people film themselves going, you know, how did I perform in this class? Um, how could I have done better? And what, I'm, what are my takeaways? You know, and they had to sit there and talk about it. And then also guess what they're learning? How to present on YouTube, how to, you know. Uh, so again, um, I'm lucky. I don't have to give comprehensive finals on, you know, the formulas for uh, whatever people have to give because that's just the not quadratic my thing. equation. The quadratic right. equation. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that, it's like uh, I think it was um, Jeff Foxworthy that said, "Any question in college that you get that you don't have the answer to, just go the Tigris and Euphrates River." And half the time, <laughs> it'll be. Half the time you'll be right. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, one, one more question, uh, uh, re- just kind of regarding that. How much have you seen where you teach or as you've interacted with others about the evolution and the reaction of the higher ed space to the undeniable reality that the, the formula is cracked, right? So the... Um, you know, kids have to show up on the campus and, you know, you're going to have so many contact hours and, you know, you know, here's your 18 credits for, you know, for your, or whatever, I guess probably 36 or whatever credits for your degree and this and that. That's gone. It's, I mean, I'm, of course, I'm, I'm just that guy, right. I'm just like, that's gone now, even though it's yeah. still in place, but students now have you, the, the power kind of, uh, um, dynamic is completely shifted. Um, what's just kind of talk to me about that. What have you seen? What have you heard talking about? And like, what, what do you think are some of the best responses that you've seen to this from either the school you're teaching at or, or elsewhere? Well, I think you and I, you know, when we were talking about, um, doing this interview and, and be, you know, talking about these things, I think that I told you that we're not real fast, you know, that it took us 300 years to figure out to put a hole in the roof. So the smoke goes out when you're sitting there in these, <laughs> not real fast. So, um, and the slowest of slows is education. Mm. Um, if you read, if you read Ovid BC about what's wrong with education and I didn't tell you it was Ovid and I just read it to you, you'd go, yeah, that's so true. Yeah. Same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't see a lot, I don't see a lot, at least on the campuses that I've been on so far, of really embracing the fact that we're going to have to change this whole thing or or we're going archaic. Um, And there's so many little colleges, you know, closing down uh, because they're trying to hold on to that new model and it's not going to work. And um, so, yeah, I... I, I feel about education the way that I feel about um, the Senate and co- Congress, mm-hmm. that we just need a bunch of younger people um, coming in going, you know, I-, I got it. You know, here's how we, here's how we do this. Here's how we, we need a younger, you know, leader mm-hmm. to come in. And um, if, if you can't teach an old dog, new tricks, then it's like my friend who just just retired said he got a letter from the college and he called it cash for clunkers <laughs> where they said they said you've been here so long that we could hire you know six new people for your salary so we'd really like you to, to move on 
<laughs> and we'll give you this kind of cat cash for clunkers. Um, <laughs> that is awesome. But you don't have to be a you don't have to be a clunker, right? Mm-hmm. You can stay relevant. I'm not a young I'm not a young woman, and you can still stay relevant and still stay in the game. But it it takes work, you know. I have to watch TikTok, which is the god awfulest thing I've ever seen, just so that I know. <laughs> Just so I know what people are watching and what's going on, you know, just back in the day, it was, you know, remember when MTV was new, I would watch it so I could talk to my students about, hey, the clash, they're so cool. You know, Mm -hmm. they go, wow, Dr. B, you know, (laughs) Um, (laughs) it takes a lot of work, but I don't see a lot of encouraging signs yet, but, but my, my, um, you know, viewfinder has been limited because of the lack of um, travel and talking mm-hmm. to other people at this point, but you know, it's slow. Education is slow, slow, slow to, you know, take on the new stuff. And, um, I remember a professor of mine at ASU when they were going to strike, the profs were going to strike. And he said to the whole class, I did not get a PhD to throw eggs at scabs. Yeah. <laughs> so I started thinking about, you know, and doctors don't become union members, you know, other professionals don't become union members. Um, you know, it depends on what you're fighting for. And I understand the, the purpose of unions. I understand, you know, the good that they do do, mm-hmm. but um, I also understand that they're harmful because they, they, what their job is, is to preserve the status quo. Exactly. And Rather than our disruptive status quo in and y- educate. Mm-hmm. That's right. And our status quo is, is, over and it you know like you said it's it's gone and so who's going to lead the charge of the new innovative um well people like you people who are putting these podcasts out so people can Mm. talk about these issues that's Mm. who's going to change it (laughs) i raise my hand i'll raise my hand for that one (laughs) Uh, I, as with, I don't know, several, you know, actually most guests on the podcast that we've had so far, I could continue this conversation for the next three hours and have a delightful time, but I'm also aware that most of our audience probably have a professorship they need to get back to. Um, tell me about what you're the most excited for over the next six to 12 months. Uh, you know, what's, is there, is there a shiny new object? Is there a, uh, a class, a teaching platform, you know, and you know, what is inspiring you and sort of. Any, basically anything that you'd like to tell our audience about. Oh, thanks. Well, yeah, there's all, that's the thing about living right now, isn't it? There's always shiny new objects. Mm-hmm. Always. <laughs> just when you think you, just when you think you've got one in your pocket, something new comes along, yeah. you know, it's really incredible. Um, there, there's a couple of really cool um, apps coming out that if you are on zoom that can help you, um, animate the stuff that you're wanting to do and animate your PowerPoints and, you know, all this kind of stuff, all that stuff is great, but it still rests on you. Mm. Right. It's like my husband was teaching a a entrepreneurship class and it was his first time. And he said, it's like being a helicopter pilot. There's all these, (laughs) you know, apps you're supposed to be turning on that students are supposed to be doing. and, and, And you're not even really teaching. You're just going, and here's, this and now you fill out that and here comes this and it's like you know we're coming in for a landing it's crazy Mm -hmm. um so i think there's got to be a good balance between the tech and the teaching for sure but as much as um education has always lagged as far as innovation in in most arenas the human heart also never changes and the Mm -hmm. human heart um you know it, it wants to be touched. It wants to, you know, when you, when you point to um, yourself, you, you point to your brain, right? Like, like who's you? you oh, everybody points to their brain. But when you point to where's love, where's caring, people always point to their heart. And that's, I think that's the heart of what we're trying to do is touch minds and hearts. And, um, you know, it takes work to do that. And just like it takes um, doctors, you know, practice and practice, practice, whatever their surgery specialty might be. We got to keep improving. We got to keep on track of this stuff and on top of it and, and be worth um, earning the title of teacher, be worth 
um, you know, living in, in their world enough that they, that you have credibility. And um, I, I think that that's the most important thing. If you're over 50 and you walk into a classroom with 19 year olds, how do you have credibility? When was the last time you were out in the world that I'm living in and doing the job that I want to do? And, you know, um, all that kind of stuff that we've already covered. So I, I just think, um, there's always going to be things that will make it better for your practice, but the thing that won't change why you're doing it and, and the emotion that you put into it and the love you can't learn from someone. I believe you can't learn from someone you don't love and you can't teach someone you don't love. And I I don't mean romance. I, I just mean that it's like I tell my students, we haven't given you a whole great world to believe in. You know, most of you come from divorced families. Most of you are having, a lot of you are having identity problems. And now we throw a pandemic at you. The media is telling you, you won't own a home. Um, You know, you'll have 12 or 15 jobs, you you know, and you're still here. Mm -hmm. You're still wanting something big and wonderful. And you still have a whole realm of possibility ahead of you. And so I want to be a part of that. I'm with you on that. And, you know, it, it, that's the human um, potential that, and possibility that you could be something bigger, better, and more at any given point in your life. So let's, why not start in my classroom? So I think that part will never change. On that note, Dr. B, this has been a really special conversation. I thank you so much for joining me today. And I'm definitely having you back on the show in the near future. Thank you so much. <laughs> I would enjoy that. Thanks for having me. Thanks again for tuning into today's episode of the eLearning Podcast. If you like what you heard, please do me the favor of following us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or whichever social media you prefer. Also, if you're interested in diving deeper on eLearning, I encourage you to get your free ticket to the eLearning Success Summit, where there are more than 70 hours of presentations on best practices. Just go to eLearningSuccessSummit.com. And then finally, for the latest news, information, and resources about e-learning, come subscribe to our newsletter at lmspulse.com. Thanks.